Welcome back. In the previous video, we had a look at the event loop in Node.js. With the help of a visual representation, we were able to form a mental model of how async code is executed. We also learned that the event loop comprises of six different queues. Two micro task queues, namely next tick queue and promise queue, a timer queue, an input output queue, a check queue, and finally a close queue. In each loop, callback functions are dequeued when appropriate and executed on the call stack. If these points are clear, let us now understand better the order of execution of a few asynchronous methods in Node.js. By understanding with code, I hope you'll be able to remember this visualization for a long time. And similar to the thread pool, we are going to do this by running a few experiments and making a note of the inference of each experiment. Let's begin. For our first set of experiments, we are going to deal with only the two micro task queues. Before we run our experiment, I want to explain how we can queue up a callback function in each of these queues. To queue a callback function into the next tick queue, we use a built in process.nextTick method. The syntax is as follows process.nextTick, and this accepts a callback function. When process.nextTick is executed on the call stack, the passed in callback function will be on queued in the next tick queue. Really simple, as you can see. Now, to queue up a callback function into the promise queue, there are a few different ways, but for our experiments, we just have to know one. The method we will be using is promise.resolve.then with a callback function. When the promise resolves, the function passed into then block is a function that will be queued up in the promise queue. Hopefully, the syntax is clear. Now that we understand how to add functions into the micro task queues, let's start with our first experiment. Back in VS Code, I'm going to start fresh with an empty index.js file. I'm going to start with two log statements. Console log one and console log two. Now, in between the two log statements, I'm going to call process dot next tick. And to this method, I'm going to pass in a callback function that simply logs a message to the console. So arrow function, console.log, this is process.nextTick1. I want you to now pause for a minute and try guess the output when we run index.js. All right, if I now run the code, you can see we have console.log1, console.log2, and then this is process.nextTick1. This brings us to our first inference. In Node.js, all user written synchronous JavaScript code takes priority over async code that the runtime would like to eventually execute. In our experiment, we see that the two console log statements are executed before the callback function passed to process.nextTick. Let me help you visualize this execution. Now I will apologize in advance as there is too little space and too much to fit in. On the left, we have the call stack and the console to see the output. On the right, we have the event loop. I will switch between the slide and VS Code as there is not enough space here for the code snippet. First, we have console.log. It is pushed onto the call stack, logs the corresponding message in the console, and is popped off the stack. Next, we have process.nextTick. This gets executed on the call stack, queues up a callback function into the next tick queue, and is popped off the stack. We still have user written code to execute, so the callback function has to wait for its turn. Execution moves on, 
and console.log is pushed onto the stack. The message is logged to the console and the function is popped off the stack. Now there is no more user written synchronous code to execute and control enters the event loop. The callback function from next to queue is dequeued, pushed onto the stack, console.log is pushed onto the stack, executed and the corresponding message is logged to the console. Console log and the callback function are then popped off the stack. Hopefully this makes it easier to understand our first experiment. All right, let's move on to our second experiment. I'm going to comment out the first experiment and start fresh from the top. For this experiment, we're going to focus only on the two micro task queues. First, I'm going to queue up a callback function in the promise queue. Promise.resolve.then and we're going to pass in a callback function. This is promise.resolve1. Next, I'm going to queue up a function in the next tick queue. Process.next tick accepts a callback function where we console log. This is process.next tick1. I want you to again pause for a minute and try guess the output. All right, if I run node index, you can see the next tick message is printed before the promise message. And this is our inference for the second experiment. All callbacks in next tick queue are executed before callbacks in promise queue. Once again, let me help you visualize the execution. I'll be a little quick as it is the second time we're doing this. When the call stack executes line one, it will queue the console log function in the promise queue. When the call stack executes line two, it will queue the callback function in the next tick queue. After line two, there is no more user written code to execute. The control enters the event loop. In the event loop, next tick queue gets priority over promise queue and that is just how the source code is written. The event loop executes the next tick queue callback function, logs the appropriate message, and then executes the promise queue callback function, logging the appropriate message. When all code is executed in the console, we see process.next tick and then promise.resolve. Hopefully this makes sense. If it does, let me walk you through a more elaborate version of this second experiment. Experiment 2.1, if I can call it that. I'm going to comment out experiment two and then copy paste the code for experiment three to save us some time. Let me walk you through what I have here. We have three calls to process.nextTick and three promise.resolves. In each of the callback functions, we log the appropriate message. This is process.nextTick1, nextTick2, and nextTick3. Similarly, promise.resolve1, resolve2, and resolve3. However, inside the second process.nextTick and second promise.resolve, we have an additional process.nextTick method. From the callbacks passed in, we log this is the inner next tick inside next tick, and this is the inner next tick inside promise. Please pause the video to understand the code we have here. All right, I want you to now take an additional pause for as long as it takes to try figure out what the order of execution is in this code snippet. If you've understood the second experiment inference, you should be able to get this. 
It's a really good exercise, so please pause the video and give it a try. All right, if I now run node index, you can see we have process.nextTick1, 2, and 3, and then this is the inner next tick inside next tick. That is followed by promise.resolve 1, 2, and 3. And finally, this is the inner next tick inside promise then block. Let me know in the comment section if you got this right. If you didn't, let me help you understand. Once again, we are going to rely on visual explanation as I feel that works the best. I will, however, Omit the call stack from the visualization to speed up the explanation. Now, when the call stack executes all the six statements, there are three callbacks in the next tick queue and three in the promise queue. There is no further code to execute and control enters the event loop. As we know, the next tick queue gets priority. First callback is executed. And the console log statement is executed, logging the corresponding message. Next, the second callback function is executed, which logs the second log statement. This time though, the callback function contains another call to process.nextTick. This will queue up the inner tick log statement at the end of the next tick queue. Node will then execute next tick 3 callback. Initially, there were only three callbacks, but the second callback added another callback to the queue. Event loop will push the inner next tick callback and the console log statement is executed. Hopefully, the first four log statements make sense. Now, the next tick queue is empty and control moves on to the promise queue. And this is similar to the next tick queue. Promise.resolve1 is logged followed by promise.resolve2. Now there is a call to process.nextTick, which adds a function to the next tick queue. However, the control is still inside promise queue and will continue to execute other callback functions. We then see promise.resolve3, and at this point, the promise queue is empty. Node will once again check if there are new callbacks in the microtask queues. Since there is one in the next tick queue, it will go ahead and execute that, which explains our last log statement. A slightly advanced experiment, but the inference remains the same. All callbacks in the next tick queue are executed before all callbacks in the promise queue. Now there is one point I would like to mention before we wind up this video, and that is the use of process.nextTick is discouraged as it can cause the rest of the event loop to starve. If you endlessly call process.nextTick, the control will never make it past the microtask queue. Even if you were to have a large number of nextTick calls, you're effectively starving the IO queue from getting to run its own callbacks. According to the docs, there are two main reasons to use process.nextTick. One, to allow users to handle errors, clean up any then unneeded resources, or perhaps try the request again before the event loop continues. And two, to allow a callback to run after the call stack has unwound, but before the event loop continues. Please do make sure you know what you're doing when using process.nextTick. With that, I hope you now have a clear idea of the order of execution for the microtask queues. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying the videos, please do leave a like as it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you in the next one.